on the left, Squeaky G playing in pink as the Roos, love that, and the Tough Toast on the right, also known as Aloysian, playing in orange as the Abbasid Dynasty. Couple of uh, interesting selections here. I believe this map is Ancient Spires once again. We are just full of Ancient Spires maps today. Uh, and in this case, the the water is like extreme, right? What's going on with this water? Will we see fishing? I don't know. By the way, before this game, I think it was this game. I don't know. May I've said it, before, it a couple times. I did say. If I don't see fishing, I'll call you out while streaming this game. So, we might see fishing. I don't know. I'm looking forward to finding out. Aloysian with that four Roman numeral statue. Love that. Or is it six? Or is it four? Or is it six? Sorry, I gotta do everything I can to keep the energy high. I think we had some chat messages there. Not coming through on the uh, replay on the spectator mode. That technology is not here. Maybe in 2023, but not for now. Squeaky G taking those uh, those deer. I don't think Aloysian knows enough to deny the deer. He might now, after this game. You better watch out. We're just increasing his exponential abilities. Two house opener. <laughs> That's like the telltale sign, right? Hey, this guy's played age two. And also the one space away from the mining camp. He thinks he's doing the right thing here, but unfortunately, as he learned recently watching this, or maybe fortunately now that it's, it's been learned, incredible stuff. We have a Mediterranean biome, by the way. Got some cypress trees in action, as well as just kind of a wide range of different tree types. One of the new, one of the new biomes. I like it. I like it. I don't need to watch this live. All right, slightly chewy. We'll see you around. We'll see you in the VOD. Dirty VOD watcher. All right, maybe he knows something that the rest of the chat doesn't. He doesn't want to stick around. Who knows? We do have some shore fishing from the Tough Toast, but it's going to get him immediately... Okay, I mean, scouts only do one damage to villagers, so... Not worth really attacking, especially when you're under fire. This, I mean, even this is worth it. I'd like to see a mill down here. But I think this is still worth it even with the walk time just because of how fast the uh, villagers gather that. Maybe it's it's debatable in that scenario, but we do have the Golden Gate now for Squeaky G. And the House of Wisdom is built, but no upgrades, no no age ups coming through yet for uh, for the Tough Toast. Another, another outside of game tidbit here. Uh, the Tough Toast was kind of asking, you know, kind of casting around, trying to figure out what Civ to play. He's new to the game, he's only tried out a few. Um, we, we mentioned to him the Abbasid Dynasty, and uh, I think I said the Abbasid Dynasty is great at spamming, if you're looking for that kind of thing. He perked up immediately, and uh, Squeaky G had me go over some of the details of the Abbasid Dynasty, including the, like, meta order of these so he's never played never really researched this is his first time on the sieve i think but the tough toast uh is gonna have a little bit of details at least to make sure that success is possible in this game squeaky g of course very uh probably the most practiced of out of any sieve on the roofs here see if that is able to be an advantage for him. Good night, Squeaky. Good night, Slightly Chewy. Good good, good to have you here. Got two on gold for the Tough Toast. Three now. Got some villagers still in queue. Working on that food. I'm interested that we have some long-distance chopping here. I think that's just the consequence of the double house opener? That must be it. Or it's a consequence of the forward barracks. That's also a possibility. Okay, the tough toast on that 40 wood. Squeaky G leaning heavy into the wood. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, uh, pretend I didn't say that. That phrase. Anyways, at least. Uh, he's got some scouts, got a stable coming up. Maybe gonna be looking for some, uh, you know, Feudal Age night raiding action. You never know. The Tough Toast still not in Feudal Age. Squeaky G with a little bit of a head start there. House of Wisdom comes through, and I'm expecting to see 
that villager discount. We'll keep an eye open for it. I think I told him before the game that that was like very important to the Abbasid, so... I don't remember if he took it or not, but I guess that's why we're watching now. There it is, in fact. Fresh foodstuffs. Reduce the cost of villagers by 50%. Squeaky G with the wheelbarrow. Pretty good time for that. I'd like to see a uh, wooden fortress on the wood line from Squeaky G just to increase the drop-off rate for the wood for the unique sieve bonus of the roost. But for now, we do have some knights coming out. And where are they rallied to? Ooh. Okay, uh, that's a, that's a raiding position, if I dare say. Fresh foodstuffs. That's that's the name, which I forgot briefly until he researched it. And now those villagers, they're only going to cost twenty-five food. Let's see what else we get from the tough toast. Going for another double house down here at the south, and I do like the knights or the. Uh, the barracks. Maybe he uh, knows a little more about the roost than I gave him credit for. Or maybe he's just going spears as a default. He does seem to do that in H2 quite a lot, just build spears as a as like a basic fundamental unit, so can't fault him for that. But will it be enough to deal with a couple of early knights and a lot of scouts? I think, by the way, this might be Squeaky G going for a little bit of a drive through Picking up all that hunt down there that probably influenced the location of that mill. A little bit of dead air as I definitely do break into my second Clementine of the night. Alright, how many scouts do we have right now? Six scouts. Does he have pro scouts though? I think he does. He already... no. Nope, doesn't have it yet. I think this might just be... No, he's just prepping like super in advance. Pro Scouts also, I think the research time has been decreased. Also, these are kind of scary to have that many units on your face, but... So Spearmen are going to be killed pretty easily in equal numbers. And Squeaky not going to go ahead and dive the TC or get too bogged down in all this stuff. Probably making the right choice there, just pushing the enemy off of that food source. Would love to see a circle round to some other key resources he can see on the map. Okay, so he's scouted like the south of the base. He's probably coming down to this gold where he knows there's a mine. Or just going back to that stealth forest for the time being. No, oh, circling around. He's going the long way. I, uh, I like that. Appreciate that. See what he uses the golden gate for. Now, uh, in the past, in 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 previous patches, Pro Scout's now coming out. He's 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 still he's gonna get there with these with these deer. <laughs> Swipe those deer. In the past, the golden gate was the default landmark to go for in the early in the early game. Provided a huge bonus because. These tickets allow you... Okay, as we get a couple villager kills here. Diving into the TC, but it's no big deal. You got knights, they got armor. And the shoreline fish coming back to bite to Tough Toast in the back a little bit. I want to try to take care of this one spear. 2v1, the knights will do pretty much fine against that. These knights, obviously not French knights. and won't be healing anytime soon. We do have the full seven scouts out now. For the seven carcasses. See if Squeaky G is able to clear this. He might want to deal with Spearman first. But before that, I was saying Golden Gate. Powerful because it allows you to just straight up buy a second town center. Even with the uh, stone cost increase of town centers by 50 stone, it means you have to use three tickets instead of two and or mine stone, mine 50 stone. Still worth doing. Also, we do have that wooden forges coming down now. Love that. Uh, so, very strong bonus there if he chooses to use it. Uh, still with just stacking up those tickets for now. And the scouts deciding it's a little too hot right there. Gonna fall back and take some other deer instead for the minute. Looks like he's burning through those sheep still. Two left alive. 
and some horsemen, actually. I think Squeaky G is not mining any stone. I'm wrong when I say that. He just started fairly recently, though. So it's going to take a while to get any more stone to get any more knights out if that's what he chooses to do. Strong plan to this would be archers, as, of course, uh, you know, the roof's wood bonus just gives them a natural inclination to build as many archers as humanly possible. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Squeaky G is going to take this fight with the spears. And now he sees more reinforcements coming in. Going to have to fall back. Not able to fight up front right now. Somebody said Strabora over here. A clutch wall for the tough toast. Gonna cause a little bit of pathing problems for the army. Sorry about that dead air. I was like spacing out for no reason. And that one was because I had to sneeze. Okay. Still pressuring this food on the forward side. And, and I'm starting now to think build archers or you're throwing for Squeaky G. Maybe he just didn't cross his mind. He's focusing right now anyways on pro scouting, I think. And this, uh, this fight. I think we're all learning the way of the wall. Yes, indeed. Indeed. It's a, a, an arc long in the making. Long, you know. The Tough Toast. Finishing up those walls. I'm not sure if you can walk past this if it's both not completed and not deleted. I know if you delete the posts, that means it's impassable. Not sure in this scenario, but we'll have to see. Maybe Squeaky G will use that to his advantage. Pink, kind of just scouting around. Okay, he's going. He's going for this deer. I think he did kill every deer on the map, so he should have a pretty solid bonus from the hunting cabins at this point. Pretty solid bounty. Just continuing to cause chaos with one or two knights, one or two horsemen in, in the back line. But now three barracks from the Tough Toast. He knows this is a this is a strong spearman sieve, the Abbasid Dynasty. Does he know about the endpoint optimization? That's a very good question. Uh, you know, I'm curious to see these drop off. I think he knows about selecting all of them and then shift clicking to pick them up. That much is that much is definitely critical if you're gonna do any amount of pro scouting at all. But at least for now, forward blacksmith. <laughs> I guess he squashed the stealth forest with that. Proxy blacksmith for the tough toast. And he's even using this last scout that was separated from the party to gather the last deer. Incredible attention to detail as we have 20 villagers attempting to collect the last berry bush. I mean, for the walls. Oh, the endpoints. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Does he know about this? Or did he, like, retask his villagers somehow? I kind of wanted to assume he knew about it in some way, but it's the only time he did it. So I think it might be a fluke. Scout from Orange keeping tabs on what's going on. I don't know if he's ever seen pro scouts like this before, but his eyes are open now. Let's see these guys drop off. Okay, so those are those are definitely all just shift shift dropping off in a group. And we just have spamming spears, the Abbasid way. And also this blacksmith is not being built, actually. It's just there. It's just halfway there. Some knights. And here are some spears from Aloysian from the Tough Toast. In his enemy's base, let's see how Squeaky G responds. Pretty quick response to this. He knew they were there already because of the vision from all these buildings. One villager not able to get out and no kills, uh, no kills there. So it's actually 10 worker kills for Squeaky G to zero for the Tough Toast. But the Tough Toast, even on top of that, three villagers ahead. Now he's going to lose I'm 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 like I'm like desperately hoping right now that Squeaky G sees the the ranged fire from the town center 
and soon from the wooden fortress, doing so much damage to these spearmen, that he decides, wait a minute, arrows are a good idea. How do I make more arrows? As we have 22 workers over here on these deer, just get pushed off casually from the deer carcass. You hate to see it. This, uh, this... I mean, this is a good amount of spears. This is 34 spears. It's scary stuff. But it has fully idled Squeaky G's eco right now. We have the Pro Scouts waiting to deliver, but there's no safe spot for it yet. Soldiers we'll move back down to the default hunting cabin. We got a couple of idols. Not sure where to go, what to do. Like I was saying, I'm kind of hoping he sees the efficacy of the arrows from the town center here and says, maybe if I made any kind of ranged unit, I would win this fight? I don't know that it's going to happen, though. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but yes, what I'm, what I'm like cruelly hinting at right now, build archers in this situation. If you ever find yourself being rushed by spearmen-only composition like this, even just if you bait the enemy into making too many spearmen with a couple of knights. Two rams now for Squeaky G, trying to push into the bottom side there. Moving on from that phrase, town center, second town center coming down for the Tough Toast. 16 minutes, a little late for the Abbasid Dynasty second TC, but we'll give it to him. It's his first game on the Civ. More villagers going down on this deer. Just build archers. I need to, like, refrain myself from saying it too much because it will become very repetitive, but just build archers, my guy. <laughs> oh man, he already knows. I already told him. <laughs> 42 bills, the second TC is definitely worth it. Yeah, no, it's definitely still worth it. I mean, you're still going to be making at least, like, 25 villagers out of each of these town centers before it becomes reasonable to stop making villas. So definitely still worth. That's You're just cutting the time in half to reach PopCap, basically. As we have more spears just moving around the map constantly, the Tough Toast finding something that he knows he's good at from age 2, controlling multiple groups of units around the map and shifting attention, and uh, able to employ that very effectively here. His raids are impressive, even though it's just spearmen, and even though... The overwatch from these towers and town center is like pretty con pretty much covering everything. Still able to get raids and villager kills now. 7 to 10 evening up e evening up that villager kill count somewhat. And more spearmen on the way. Now, again, like if you're in a normal game with a normal player who doesn't have some kind of grudge against archers, expect to not be able to do this. He's trying to go counter Spearman, by the way, if you uh, if you see that right here. Three rams. Just gotta, just gotta do with armored units that move fast. Oh, uh, don't give him too many tips here. I'm, uh, I don't wanna, uh, yeah, well maybe do give him tips, because I'll only ever play with him on an online team. These spears are gonna all die, so again, not the most effective raiding unit. But they are doing work, and there are a lot of them. And that's really what the Tough Toast is all about anyways, so he's happy. Ram's moving in. One Spearman spots it out, but will get killed. Another group of eight Spears seems to be the operating number of Spears for a platoon in the Tough Toast's army. Is moving down to, uh, to face the enemy. But we have 13 Spears from squeaky g these upgrades are attack bonus for squeaky g defense bonus for the tough toast i believe those cancel each other out actually tough toast also has the attack bonus so he'll have the unit to unit advantage but the numbers i think are still too much squeaky g gonna take that also he hasn't seen this town center before just now scouts it out so these rams are in a completely off position and squeaky g does tend to do this i feel like just send the rams off on their own while the main army gets distracted by units and it never ends well this is this is the downfall of ram ranch right here the ram control the tough toast to get a plus one ranged armor which is great against tc fire that is true so good move on the upgrades there another hint abbasid get uh free uh Free siege engineering build. What is it? What is it called? I'm losing my mind. 
This one. This one. Siege Engineering. I was right. I was right. Absolutely get it for free. So you can just build ramps right now in the dark, in the feudal age, and uh, do some lasting damage. You know what I'm saying? Get a little ranch of your own set up uh, for your grandkids to lose to the bank. More ramps coming down for Squeaky G. Abbey of the Trinity coming down for Squeaky G. The Tough Toast did go up to Castle Age at some point, but we completely missed it. He did, in fact, take the military wing second. And he's now going to research agriculture, which is the uh, economic wing. Castle Age upgrade that it unlocks. Improve villagers' gathering rate from farms. And boot camp. Increase health of all infantry by 15%. So that's just going to allow him to lean even harder into the spearmen. And any fight that looks like it's on Squeaky G's side in a one-to-one, -one, spearman to spearman, going to be leaning pretty significantly in Tough Toast's favor. Tough Toast also upgrading to Veteran, getting that age up advantage going. Squeaky G with the fitted, le fitted leather work now. Oh, man. Just build archers. Anyways. Uh, anyways, back over here. We got houses around the House of Wisdom. Now, we're still at Golden Age Zero with nine structures built. I think he didn't know about the Golden Age uh, area of effect thing. So we have, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I think that might be nine by like one tile. If this is 10, then there it is. Squeaky G reaching Castle Age with Abbey of the Trinity. Basically the same exact spot as his game against the Gummin 135. You remember that hell game also on Ancient Spires. No military production buildings allowed. Mosque is not 10, so maybe the House of Wisdom itself counts as one. Maybe it's close enough to the TC. I don't know. Either way, doesn't know about the Golden Age bonus. And he's close, but not quite there to getting tier 1. Squeaky G with a little bit of an attempted raid, but the Tough Toast is uh, fully walled up. Solid walls from this guy. And now moving into Man at Arms. So the time for arrows... Okay, both players moving into Man at Arms. Again, just gonna give the Tough Toast an advantage. Third town center up here. Going to be raided. Tough Toast attempting to garrison with right click, no hotkey right click, but it was the town center itself was slightly damaged, so the villagers were just trying to repair it. Didn't lose any villages in the end, it's still 10 to 7. But yeah. Uh difficult if you're not if you're not experienced with the garrison mechanic in this game. If you're used to just right clicking units into buildings, it can be a little difficult, but. Just gotta hit G on those guys in the auto path to the nearest safe spot. That's my uh, that's my move. Relics still sitting out here on the map. Okay, we do have the warrior monks now collecting some of those. Roost another uh, another sieve that that can go warrior monks. I know we were talking about that earlier in the day. Just because the warrior monks are so speedy and you get them out of your age up building, kind of streamlines the streamlines the process a little bit. And also, Rus are big fans of passive gold anyways, so... Actually, uh, Rus would be pretty solid as a late-game sieve just for that reason alone. They get a lot of passive gold and come from various sources. Not quite as crazy as the English farms, though. I mean, we have the Tough Toast, very light on gold units, all in on spears. This is... okay, 12 spears, 6 man-at-arms now. Like I was saying, in a normal game against somebody that doesn't, for some reason, hate archers, uh, that that spearman-only feudal age comp would not work out. But here, in this game in particular, it's working great. Tough Toast finds the uh, the ram outpost. We only have four rams up here, unfortunately. Squeaky G, kind of. Keeps attempting a bit of a ram ranch action here. <clears throat> Sorry, that was unearned. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have gone for it, but I had to at least once tonight. But not able to commit and not able to have the time for it. 
I think Squeaky G actually does win this fight with reinforcements and probably more man at arms, but here comes the main army from the Tough Toast, and it's 12 spears, 9 man at arms to 6 spears, and 4 rams. So, looks like the Tough Toast is going to clean that one up after all, and these rams, well, they do cost a hefty amount of wood, so Squeaky G is going to try to get as much value out of them as he can. He realizes, wait, it's going to be actually a, a little bit closer than I thought here. Is it the upgrades? It's the reinforcements, I think. But Squeaky G gonna try to use these rams before they get lost. Good, good sense reading that, uh, reading that fight. And that gets cleaned up. Tough Toast now with a little bit of units scattered throughout the map. Squeaky G moving out to the forward gold and now starting to capture the sacred sites. We'll see what happens with this one on this side. Usually in Ancient Spire, sacred sites are kind of one-to-one -one split next to in each other's bases. Oh wow, I didn't actually choose the outcome of the uh, grand final prediction. Let's do that now. Let me make sure I remember who actually won the grand final. It was this guy, complete prediction. Yes, I'm sure. All right, lucky winner, 25%. 1K versus 3K, by the way. The uh, the 1K won that. I'm avoiding saying who won because I don't want to spoil for anybody who's watching this video later on YouTube. Klopp would be disappointed with that mining camp. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't know. This guy, on the other hand, yeah. I mean, come on, give me one more tile. What's what's one more tile to your APM? I think Squeaky G might try to take this, or maybe uh, he's just going for that relic. Also, this is a disaster, but I guess the Tough Toast's attention is elsewhere. Squeaky G not doing too much better, so it's not giving anybody a necessarily a uh, competitive advantage at this point to have Villagers walking 30 miles for their wood. This one's doing a little bit better over here. Anyways. We now have Mangano's Spears, Man at Arms as our composition for the Tough Toast. On the other side, Squeaky G going, looks like 100% Man at Arms. Seems like uh, Squeaky does tend to go more of a one unit type army. Plus Rams, of course. The Tough Toast. Sprinkling in a bit of everything. Maybe that's just because he wants to try out all the units and see what's good. Still not quite sure. Let's see if this guy can get away with it. Oh, he sees it. The edge of the vision, but these guys are moving the wrong way. Looks like Squeaky G will be able to pick up... And the, the vision uh, left it while it was being carried, but the relic can't disappear. So it's just being... Uh, it's just floating. <laughs> Love that. A logging camp. That's why I was. That's why I was uh, confused. We're gonna have to see a monastery from Squeaky G if he wants to hold on to all these relics. We're at four out of five, assuming that one comes back safely. Actually, we're at 5 out of 5, assuming they all come back safely. Looking at the overlay instead of trying to figure things out on the map, and mm, what a novel idea. Squeaky G does find this forward attack from the Tough Toast, and I think Squeaky G will also see this off. So both players winning fights at, at home, at least for the minute. And both players moving their rams up, knowing that it's, a hopeless, uh, it's hopeless to try anything else. The Tough Toast is able to save the Mangonel, at least for now. I think Squeaky G not going to be able to spot that one out. We'll see it soon enough. And also it does have his units on scattered formation. Nice touch there. I believe these rams... No, villagers are just going to garrison. I'd love to see the villagers get pulled to take out the rams, because they're very effective at that. And arrow fire from towers is not. But what can I say? We have some more barracks coming up on the northern side after the attempted attack earlier from Squeaky G. 
And the Tough Toe's doing, doing pretty well, keeping some units out around the map, just randomly, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure your enemy stumbles across you sometimes. Squeakage also actually doing that. They're doing that quite a bit. Go vision mode here. I think he might be planning something up to the north. Might be fomenting some sort of aggression. Still only that. Alright. Second town center. Don't know when it happened, but it's there. Duly noted. Second town center here for Squeaky G. 58 to 94 on the build count is, is problematic, though, for our Roost player. And he's not been taking great trades. I mean, the destroyed value, actually, 8,900 to 8,100. That means Squeaky G, I think, has done more damage in resources than the Tough Toast at this point in the game. Also, army value basically even, with Squeaky G having a little bit of the advantage there. So regardless of vil count, and regardless of army count, Squeaky G does have some value here. Definitely could pull something through, but it sort of feels like neither player really is able to find much value. 3TC versus 2TC. Yeah, I mean, if they both continue producing up to 100 or 120, like, the 3TC is definitely going to have more advantage. Now, uh, the Tough Toast taking that Imperial Age Culture Wing, and Squeaky G going for a... Side of the map, Spaskaya Tower. I think he also hates walling. We'll add that to the list. Walling, archers, trebuchets. Things that are abhorrent to the worldview of Squeaky G. Rams, all day. Keep those ones coming. Speskaya Tower, I mean, I guess it'll secure any raids from the north. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm losing it. If your dog is listening, he doesn't care if I just, if I just go like that. So why should you? Uh, I don't know what point I'm trying to make. <laughs> We're gonna just move on. I think I had my first dumb commentator joke. <laughs> Happens to everybody. Squeaky G with strong army composition right now, and he's looking pretty solid in general. The Tough Toast has a little more resources going on. 4,800 wood to uh, 300 and 400 wood. What if I don't have a dog? Good point. Well, get one and make them watch this. We have camels in the queue for the Tough Toast. Now, Squeaky G has pivoted now in this at this point exclusively to Man at Arms, which as the Roos is not really something your Civ is known for. And also he's doing the thing again. He's doing the thing again where the where the Rams go off on their own and the whole army just sits around somewhere else. But uh, anyways, uh, looks like these Man at Arms from the Tough Toast, by the way, hit that follow key, are going to have their uh, special sword upgrade. Doing a little bit more. They're just doing they're just doing a little bit more. 14 attack on that sword. I'm gonna uh it's, it's just a cool asset. It's just graphics. Uh, anyways, we got we have mangonels coming out. What else can I distract them with? Look at this lumber camp. This is terrible. Build another lumber camp, guys. Come on. Um I think yes, there are crossbows here. Squeaky G loses this fight and it gets cleaned up. I'm gonna call that ahead of time as he pulled off some Man at arms here. I think splitting the army there plus the mangonel shots is really what did it. He's going for the base dive with three rams into the House of Wisdom. If he doesn't kill the House of Wisdom outright, it's basically useless. I think I would prefer a focus on military production buildings or even houses. As we have what was so nicely alluded to earlier on, a little bit of house pathing issue. Also trade with 111 gold. I'm gonna get caught up in the party as well. Okay, the trader makes it through, and not enough army here to defend the rams. And this ram's just kind of doing a little house dance. Just attack the house, my guy. Just attack the house. 
That's all you need to do. Just, just hit the house. With this Imperial Age, by the way, improved. Okay, I hope you read that because I didn't. And improved processing builders drop off plus eight percent more resources. That's right. So that that tech that we just missed with the mouse over was the reason that you generally always go Culture Wing second, which is not what the Tough Toast did in this case, but that's fine. You go Culture Wing for Castle Age to get that tech, which decreases the cost of all researches in your empire. Also a secondary attack here with the Tough Toast struggling with the garrison mechanic again. There we go, he got it in there. I think he's probably looking for the hotkey at that point. So you typically beeline the cheaper workers in Feudal Age, and then you beeline the cheaper techs in Castle Age. That's kind of the reasoning behind that order. But, hey, he's got it now. He's getting techs now, so it's worth it. Trade? Alright, Squeaky G knows you gotta deny trade, especially in Season 3 of Age of Empires 4. Trade is kind of insane right now, even as the Abbasid. Even without the trade wing. So, good castle there from Squeaky G, trying to maybe capture the sacred site as well? I'm not sure. Oh, decap the, the sacred site. Looks like enough spears are out from the Tough Toast. He's an experienced spearman user. Uh, he's he's going to be able to deal with any kind of uh, any kind of knights at this point, especially when they just stand there and attack the spearmen. Hand cannons from the Tough Toast. This he, I think he's really just throwing all the units at the at at the wall right now. Like uh, he's like testing them like they're spaghetti, right? Is this one good? Is this one good? Is this one? If they stick, then they're good. Also, housed at 190, almost at pop cap to Squeaky G's. 114. That's uh, that's a little bit of a monk ass. University for Squeaky G up here. Looks like he got. All right, he's he's, he's get uh, not not anything yet. Speskaya Tower did go up, of course. Castle Imperial Age for both players. Wooden fortress on this lumber camp. I'd like to see maybe another lumber camp even. And a full commitment still to elite man at arms. For our Roos player, not something that you see very often. The Roos man at arms. I mean, I know I don't see them very often because they look crazy. Look at these guys. They got like full gold ramiant going on right now. Are any of them gonna face me? Okay, look at. Oh, all right. Oh, we got kind of like a spike. Oh, 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 spiky helmet. Wow, crazy. Any of the and the pink just makes it even crazier. And the choice to build so many of them, I, I'm going to stop clowning on my guy, I can't do it. Anyways, <laughs> a castle drop from Squeaky G. Ranged attack upgrades confirmed hates archers. Yes, exactly what I'm saying. This castle is going to go up, and there is no siege here for orange. It's going to be great launching off point. Okay, there was a lot of damage done to the castle before it was finished. And it looks like Orange is just going to try to kill it with uh, melee units. There's, there is boiling oil. Yeah, boiling oil's in. Researching spring in place and cannon in place, but Castle just goes down, just like that. Okay, okay. He's doing that same exact strat that we've seen from the Tough Toast two times in a row now. Playing as when he when he when he plays as the Goths in Age Two, just kill buildings with an infinite number of infantry units, and it does seem to work for him. Now, if Squeaky G had gotten this uh, Court Architects technology, that castle may have lasted a little bit longer. But hey, we're still uh, we're still gaming right now. Hand cannoneers in a solid group of hand cannoneers, a lot of elite man at arms, and I think the Tough Toast has learned from his opponent. Maybe uh, he's doing that because it's a good idea. Decides to drop his own castle. Looks like also, before the reinforcements arrive at least, Squeaky G is going to take a pretty solid fight, pretty good fight here. The castle is going to go up though before he even has a chance to attack it. And if he, if, uh, if Pink decides to dive this castle, I don't think it's going to go quite so well for him. A lot of infantry units for our Pink player, but I think just the villager count different. Also, 37 idols for the Tough Toast. What are we looking at here? Where are these guys? 
Okay, gold miners. I mean, that's 22. That's most of them, right? That's like half, two thirds of them. Well, you can't. Yeah, you, you can't win them all. He did win the middle fight, and that's what counts. And even with 37 idols. Well, you know what? Squeaky G is actually catching up in villager count. The tough toast. Taking his eye off the ball a little bit. Lost the third TC. It's getting later into the game at the point where you're like, well. You know, we're in Imperial Age. Why am I... I still need to make vi villagers? I am in Imperial Age. That's like a... That's so two ages ago, making villagers. Come on. Oh, it's the trade. That's what's doing it. By the way, Squeaky G decided to make trade. And that's a different mindset than making villagers, which means that he's actually going to do it. And get 173 gold per trade. Okay. This guy's not out of the game yet. A great battle, Swilly. Welcome in to the chat. Uh, this force could be a problem, though. Squeaky G... Well, he does have rams. <laughs> He's trying to take out this castle, I believe, is the plan. But we're going to need to see... I mean... Okay, so the Rus can't build, like, Springles in the field. That's only the Mongols and the, the Abyssin dynasty. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of kills. And the Mangonels are free to fire again. And he's going to move out with the Rams because he has no other choice. More Rams being produced for our orange player. One, two, three, four, five, six. Are we going to reach seven Rams in the game right now? I don't know if we are. Four, I mean, these, these are here, but they're not finished, so they don't count. I'm a stickler. Imperial Age equals post-Villager Age. Exactly, Pick, exactly. You know the score. Hand cannons are a great addition against man arms. True. Very true. How many hand cannons do we see for the tough toast? He is actually leaning into them, and he can afford them because he has the stronger economy pretty significantly if he gets rid of those 23 idols. So, great choice against man at arms, and if Squeaky G is, uh, is, is convinced that that's all he wants to build, well, that's all he's going to build. I think we have reached the critical mass to call this moment a certified... Ram Ranch moment. I don't know. I'm trying to like make it a whole thing now. We've, we've gone too far. Seven Rams for Squeaky G. Where are they? They are up here on the north. Six of them anyways. This is going to be a sneaky TC dive and I think it's going to work if he gets it off in time. On the other side, uh, it's looking like a little bit of a disaster back at home for Squeaky. The towers, well, they're doing all, they're doing their job, and actually the army not really moving in for orange. They're just being used to build rams. They're just workers at this point. One landmark down, and he did actually end up using all of the tickets on something, at least. These guys not moving out yet, but that could be used to a pretty solid effect to weaken the economy of his enemy. More rams coming down for our orange player. Both of these players are going to be full certified Ram Ranchers by the end of this. No Trebs yet. <laughs> yeah, true. Okay, we do have some cannons being produced now. Cannons will do well. They're like the brother to Trebs. But, you know. I mean, I guess I understand why Squeaky G hasn't gone Trebs. Because he hates the concept. Somewhat surprised by the Tough Toast's choices. Maybe he just wants to lean into the theme. This is a squeaky G game after all. Okay, pulling villagers to take out the rams. Good move. Not too many ranged units from our orange player to deal with this. And they're distracted by the men at arms. So the villagers should survive pretty well for now. But squeaky G has... Okay, he does still have production moving. Still producing, kind of getting bottled up here though, and there's a lot of villagers stuck in here. 53 and falling to 89, 51. Trade is still going, but how long will that last before our orange wave reaches the back of the base? I don't know. The rams up on the top, still taking their time. This castle is doing work, by the way. If we had another castle, I mean, there's not really any space anywhere, but another castle would, uh, would really save a lot of time, and Strelsey from Pink. I like the Strelsey switch. I think it's about 15 minutes too late. 
for the Strelsey switch. I mean, again, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe I like ranged units too much, I'm starting to wonder. But, uh, more Strelsey, please. <laughs> I don't know, at, at, at 100, uh, no, 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 no. sorry, pardon me. At 228 food and 6,900 gold, I don't think he's going to be able to sustain any kind of Strelsey production. Especially when the enemy has 6,800 food and 5,200 gold, and it's catastrophically more per minute. I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's like 1,500, maybe 2,000 total resources per minute, I mean, to uh, uh, three to 4,000 on the other side. Is that a ranged unit? Yeah, it's archers that he hates. Ranged units uh, of the other flavors are fine. Tough Toast with 9,400 score, Squeaky G at 7, now 6,900, nice. Uh, it's not in unrecoverable, especially while well, now the trade is being harassed a little bit. By the way, they changed it. Recent patch, recent patched fact time. They changed it so that uh, traders don't take bonus damage from Spearmen anymore, if you didn't know. Pro tip. Traders do not take bonus damage from spears any longer. Landmark victory approaching two out of four. It does say that they're a cavalry unit. But that's just flavor text. So, you know. There you go. These cannons, I think, are pretty clutch. The spears very slow and somewhat easy to burn down at great expense. All five relics, by the way, for Squeaky G. Great job on that. 9,600 gold. I mean, the guy's got a plenty of gold. Give him that. It's a lot of, well, you get, you're getting a little bit of a Streltsy mass here. But will he be able to mass any Streltsy uh, before these cannons take out the Speskaya Tower? I don't think so. We'll have to wait and see. Stable's coming up for Squeaky G. He's probably going to try to get some horsemen out to kill the siege in a last-ditch effort. That would be my guess. I don't know. Ram Ranch is coming through. He didn't go for this TC at all. He's trying to snipe the House of Wisdom. I think Squeaky G is underestimating how much health this building has in the Imperial Age, it's insane. 17,000 health, most health of any building in the game, I believe. I'm just saying that. Also, the house pathing, once again, destroying his hopes and dreams right now. Maybe if the houses weren't here, Squeaky G would have been able to take out the House of Wisdom. I don't think he would have been able to take out the House of Wisdom and the Town Center, in either case, but... There we go. Just attack the houses, my guy. Just take them out, get them out of the way. Final landmark, under attack from Squeaky G. Castle being built by six villagers, the last six out of 19 villagers working on that castle, and some knights being produced out of these stables. Well, let's see if he can hold. Trying to turn this into a landmark race, but not looking great for Squeaky G right now. And the economy is far and away like if this game goes on after this gets saved, if it gets saved, he doesn't have much hope. The rams will go down. Man at arms pulled to try and dive this castle again. Where are the cannons? Where are the cannons? Cannons? Can I? Where do they go? They're somewhere around here. Am I blind? There we go. Okay, they're literally right there walking around on screen. The Tough Toast just pulling those cannons up to the Speskaya Tower. He knows that's the final landmark. Villagers trying to repair this keep, but somehow the Tough Toast's infantry units are just countering keeps right now. Twice at least in this game have they done this. Uh, and now under the influence of the Speskaya Tower, he doesn't care. He's going to kill this keep. He may lose all of his infantry. Villagers now moving over to repair the best guy, but the cannons are on top of it. One more hit and it goes down. Villagers repairing for their life. If these cannons weren't here, I think it would have saved it. And an incredible move, but there we go. Game one of King of the Losers, age four, match two. Goes to the Tough Toast, also known as Aloysian. Certainly becoming a force to be reckoned with. GG to both players.